conservation environment scandal I've known. My grandpa was planting green back in the 70s, was trying out stuff like that, which the equipment wasn't quite where it's at now to be able to do that. Cover crops have so many benefits uh, with a row crop situation. Uh, number one, being soil health, building your organic matter, uh, creating that environment for those, for those organisms to thrive. Essentially, it's as simple as you want to make as many tons of organic matter possible an acre should be our goal, and that's what we're trying to do here. Nitrogen is not very efficient to make. There's enough nitrogen in the air to meet our needs, and the relationship going on here is what fixes that out of the air. Nitrogen and carbon are the two basic building blocks for all life, so it's, it's, it's what fuels the vegetative growth. It's symbiotic relationship, they both help each other out, so you can make a lot of nitrogen with your cover crop doing it this way and eventually maybe wean yourself off of chemical fertilizers. So basically what we're standing on is this huge uh, symbiotic ecosystem of good bacteria, good fungi, such as like your mycorrhizal fungi, and beneficial insects. And all of these work together with the use of cover crops to build up your soil health, your organic matter, uh, create glomalin, which is basically a natural glue that holds soil particles together. So basically, just think of it as we're standing on top of a living, breathing organism. The amount of insects and things I've seen out here, it took a few years and probably really didn't start seeing it until we got the diversity in the mix. these beans have been planted if this was brown all these bugs weren't wouldn't be here you know all these birds wouldn't be out here you wouldn't be here in quail wouldn't see being turkeys nesting out here I believe those are earthworm or nightcrawler eggs maybe there's life here that's the main thing chemicals all of it together is pretty hard on them you're destroying their habitat most of the bugs out here are not all that harmful to us So one time said giving a plant too much nitrogen is like giving a teenager alcohol. Makes them do stupid things. Soil is very much alive and that is what kind of drives the system. It's 107 on the surface and 88 under the cover crop. So this test is going to show how quickly the water can infiltrate into the soil profile. And this is kind of a unique spot. They planted green in this field, so that's basically where they planted into a live standing cover crops. And it created this mat along the surface of the soil. And this does a lot of things. A lot of it is, um, it provides a buffer for temperature control. The, the cover we're getting here is keeping our soil cooler, which is obviously less evaporation. The microbes are happier, you know, microbes are like us, they like it at like 75 degrees. So the cooler we can keep that, the better. Your water infiltration rate is another very important thing. This is gonna simulate a rain event and how healthy the soil is to allow this water to infiltrate. Now that soil is covered, started the timer. 
this just shows um, a soil structure that has a lot of macropores that allows air and water to become uh, infiltrated. So this was about a minute and 30 seconds and the majority of this site is infiltrated. We just are looking for a glistening surface. So here you can see those macropores I was talking about, these earthworm channels, these roots all the way down that create those spaces, especially when the cover crop dies, these will decompose and those spaces will remain either full of organic matter or as a channel for water inf infiltration, insect movement, etc. We've been how long without rain? Three or four weeks without anything much, if not longer than that. And I mean, that's not overly dry there. Soil erosion, we're having so many of these huge rain events lately. Uh, where we just have many inches of rainfall at one time instead of these, what we used to have was these slow, uh, easy settling rains. try to get rid of water as quick as we can, obviously, and you see the results here. Not only is the damage obvious here, but it's carrying sediment and all the nutrients and everything down to, a lot farther down the creek, which ends up in the river, the Gulf of Mexico, and that's what's causing a lot of problems down there. If our infiltration rates were better in our soil, in our yards, everywhere, of course, we'd have less runoff and less of all that occurring. Exposed soil, when the raindrop hits the ground, that soil particle becomes dislodged. And then whenever rainfall is, is rushing across the surface, that soil particle is translocated off site. So you're losing your growing medium, essentially. So you see how this looks like concrete? That's not going to infiltrate water. So a raindrop hitting bare soil is like the most detrimental force there is to it. Well, this gully was here before all this rain. We've got clear water. We didn't have any more erosion. You know how many methods I went through before I figured out how to heal gullies out in the field like this? A bunch. <laughs> So the runoff is getting better with the cover crops on it and everything. You know, at first it was a lot worse, but that's probably good enough to drink right there. If you get down to it, I mean, it'd be interesting to see what some of that over on the county road looks like. It ought to show a pretty big difference. That, that's a lot of sediment, high rate of speed, a lot of water. I mean, you're losing your bottom ground, your creek bottom ground, some of your richest soil there is, and we're just letting it go down the river. So how do you get started with cover crops? The first step is to plant green. Instead of spraying and killing everything on the topsoil, planting cover crops early in the fall season after harvest has shown many benefits that include moisture control, weed suppression, carbon sequestration, erosion control, and the preservation of wildlife presence. The second step is crimping and planting, which starts the nutrient cycle. The cover crop creates a metaphorical suit of armor for your soil. After being rolled, the cover crop begins to decompose. That prevents water from cutting through the field and has also shown benefits like protecting your crops from frost. As the cover crop decomposes, your cash crop grows just like in any other field, except now with added protection and nutrients. After the harvest, the whole process begins again with planting your cover crop. 
Plants are the only thing on this planet that can capture energy from sunlight and turn it into carbon. The plants supply energy and nutrients to the soil, charging the soil battery. When these roots run deep in healthy soil, you too can help re-energize our fields. Why, why would you not do this if you know it can be done, I guess, is the question. I've always asked myself there a little bit, you know. We know that chemicals have got us to where we're at. They've been really handy, but we're getting to a point where we know the ill effects of them and we know there's ways of getting around them. I would much rather have this than something dead and spraying chemicals and kind of putting everybody at risk. Mother, can you see me now? Even when I Suddenly things start tumbling down like fallen leaves But still I breathe Still I breathe Still I breathe I face the prettiest of thoughts And put them in your hands Sometimes afraid that someday, somewhere I might lose all I have And all I'll do is stand out front of you and come Still I 